Wow. Well, that's a great way for the WWE to completely squash a brand new up and coming heel. What's going on everybody, Dawsonator here, back again with your Smackdown Live review for the 15th to the 8th, 2017. Going to be going through Smackdown Live today, and quite a disappointing show with some of the booking decisions made, interesting calls, lots of disappointing things to report on too, so let's get straight into it. We kicked off the show with Jinder Mahal promo in the middle of the ring, again, Feels like every single commentary I've had, bar one, I've said we've started off the show with a promo in the ring. Jinder Mahal basically has a celebration that he should have had three and a half weeks ago when he defeated Randy Orton in the Punjabi prison match. Jinder Mahal basically came out and had a bit of a celebration with all of his Indian folk and was interrupted by Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, Nakamura promised to take the WWE Championship from Jinder Mahal. Nothing much to really report on about this segment. It seemed like a bit of a forced segment that they put together at the last second. Very, very she Only had less than a fortnight to build up Shinsuke Nakamura versus Jinder Mahal. So I'm not quite sure how they're going to go in the playing out of this match. But... I will get to my thoughts on the SummerSlam predictions later on in this video, so let's move on. We had a, a women's match between Natalia and Becky Lynch. We also had a, an interference from Carmella, teasing that she was going to cash in her Money in the Bank contract at SummerSlam. Natalia beat Becky Lynch by submission in the sharpshooter. Naomi was on commentary, so we had pretty much all of SmackDown's decent women on the show. Uh, it was a good warm-up match for Natalia. She looks in good, good nick. I really do hope that she does come out on top at SummerSlam. So let's have a look here. We had Rusev versus Chad Gable in a complete and utter squash match. Nothing like the other match they had the other week where Gable put up a really good fight. Rusev completely dominated here and just destroyed him on the outside of a ring. It was a count out and set him up on the outside table, put him in the accolade and tried to torture him. So put him in that until he was passed out, got in the ring, got on the mic and talked some, talk some shit about Randy Orton. And then all of a sudden you see him look to his side and he's down and out for an RKO. Again, not a lot going on here. Rusev looked completely like a beast, beating the shit out of Gable, but yeah, no no words from Randy, just two RKO's in two weeks. So, you know, there we go. That's that's basically the big big lead up to SummerSlam. Kevin Owens and AJ Styles have another confrontation with Shane McMahon in the ring. AJ Styles apologized to Shane about last week about kicking him in the head. Shane McMahon accepted that apology. Kevin Owens started talking some shit, tried to shake Shane's hand, then tried to shake AJ's hand, refused, and bit of pushing and shoving resulted in AJ nearly punching Shane in the face. Shane caught the punch and looked quite pissed off with AJ. Then Shane McMahon went to let him go and Kevin Owens tried to super kick AJ Styles but inadvertently missed and kicked Shane McMahon right in the chop. So that's going to be fun to see what happens at SummerSlam in terms of where Shane McMahon's alliance is going to lie. I think he's going to probably get a few punches in either way at SummerSlam and get a little bit of payback on either one. So it seemed like the exact same segment as last week just with a different outcome. So it seemed, you know, a little bit a little bit of a wasted segment that they could have done something better with, but I can't really think of anything better to do. It's just that that seemed a bit lazy. But I can also understand that with the storyline where they're going, they both want to have something to for Shane to be pissed off with both of them about. So we move on. We had the New Day versus the Usos in a tag team match. The Usos came out on top. They look very good here. They were very aggressive again. I really like the way that they've been going around with their swagger and and looking really badass. They don't do anything too flashy unless it's their super fly move off the top rope. Uh, they've done a really good job being heels and I'll really look forward to the match at SummerSlam. I honestly think that this is probably going to be the best match on the show. These guys completely stole the show at Battleground, absolutely ripped the show a new one and nothing could follow what they did. So I think, I think that they will have the best match at SummerSlam. We move on. From there, final Fashion Peaks segment, uh, Fandango claimed to be abducted by aliens, which is just ridiculous. He and Tyler Breeze dug through a pile of evidence. Apparently there is something big on the horizon for the tag team division. I'm assuming that means that they're going to be having a tag team match for the titles in the future at some point. The main event of the evening was Jinder Mahal versus John Cena in a singles match. Quite a long segment. 
quite a long match. The Singh brothers helped maintain some evenness in the match to stop John Cena from completely dominating. Jinder Mahal was AA'd from the second rope in a super AA. John Cena was about to win and we had the interference from the money in the bank holder Baron Corbin. Now this is why I've gone through the show relatively quickly because this is the discussion that I wanted to get into. I don't understand at all why Baron Corbin would rush in to cut the bout short and try and cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase but be completely distracted by Cena at ringside. So what happened was Jinder Mahal had the super AA from the top rope, was about to lose the match when Baron Corbin rushed in. Why wouldn't Baron, Baron Corbin just run in and let Cena win? I understand maybe on the rivalry he wouldn't want him to have a win going into SummerSlam. But why would Baron Corbin break up the match and then try and cash in? Why? I understand from a Hills perspective trying to stop the good guy from winning, but that just means that the good guy's going to get you back straight away, which is exactly what happened. The match started. John Cena hopped up on the top rope, distracted him. Baron Corbin punched him. Jinder Mahal schoolboy pinned him, rolled him up and won straight away within seconds of the bout starting. What a complete and utter waste of the Money in the Bank briefcase. He gets nothing out of it. He gets no sort of push. It just seems like this was just a completely spontaneous decision for Baron Corbin to be completely screwed out of having a chance at the World Heavyweight Championship. Don't get me wrong, I am fucking thrilled about this, but I do feel bad for a guy that you can see has been working hard over the last couple of years. He just gets his one and only opportunity ripped out from underneath him. Unless after SummerSlam, he gets a, a title run at some point. But the match wasn't even good. The Mahal and Cena didn't seem to gel very well. Corbin just, I just can't understand why they would make Corbin have a failed cash-in after he won the briefcase a month, or just over a month ago. And now that the WWE title match at SummerSlam loses a bit of its must-see because we, we know he doesn't have his briefcase anymore. So that just makes me lose my investment in the SummerSlam match for the WWE Championship because I know Baron Corbin's not going to cash in. So that's really making me think that Jinder Mahal is going to completely dominate at SummerSlam and continue his run. So... It's really disappointing to see. I really think that like, they could have given him a run with that all the way up until the Royal Rumble or even fast lane sometime next year or even something like let him win the title at Survivor Series and then lose it at the Royal Rumble, give him a short run. I don't know, something like that. Don't just you know have him lose the title, lose the, the opportunity at a championship in like 30 seconds. I'm going to quickly go through my predictions for SummerSlam. I've given my thoughts on what a ridiculous waste that was. We're going to have Cesaro and Sheamus versus Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose for the WWE Raw Tag Team Championships. I'm going to pick Cesaro and Sheamus to win because I think Dean and Seth are too... They still have too many issues. That's that's how I feel. I, I think maybe give them another month of storylines and they win them at the next pay-per-view. If they get another shot at the next pay-per-view, I will definitely be picking them to win that. But I think that it's still a bit fresh, just the idea of them getting together and the fact that they get a tag team title match. This could be maybe the start of their dissension and leading towards a heel turn from Dean Ambrose or something like that. So I'm going to be picking Cesaro and Sheamus to retain their Raw Tag Team Championship. John Cena versus Baron Corbin. Well, given the results of SmackDown, this match will now have a lot more animosity in it. You'd think, you'd think Baron Corbin would be winning at SummerSlam after he lost his briefcase. There could not be any other outcome. If he loses his briefcase and then five days later loses at SummerSlam, that dude's career is in serious trouble. It's hard to come back from that. You look at what happened to Damien Sandow, right? John Cena lost his briefcase. It doesn't matter. That's John Cena. He can lose every match for the rest of his career and he'll still be fine. But Baron Corbin, who's an upcoming star, loses his briefcase and then loses a high profile match at SummerSlam, that will not bode well for his career at all. I, I date back to October 2013 when Damien Sandow cashed in his customised briefcase, didn't win, and then what happens to the poor guy? Nothing. He gets left in limbo, becomes Miz Dow, makes that absolutely fantastic, and then WWE just lets him go. What a waste. So, giving that track record, it's not going to be too good if Baron Corbin doesn't win at SummerSlam, so I'm backing Baron Corbin to win or possibly get disqualified at SummerSlam. That's what I think is going to happen. He's either going to lose his absolute mind and beat the living shit out of John Cena or he's going to beat him clean in the ring and get a little bit of revenge. 
but I'm going to pick that he's going to win. Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt. Well, who gives a fuck because we just saw it on Raw. So I'm going to be picking Finn Balor to get a revenge win back. That's it. Simple. Big Show versus Big Cass with Enzo Amore above the ring in a shark cage. you got to go Big Cass. You can't, you can't have Big Show beating other dudes like him that are so young and still so ready to take it to the next level. If, if Big Show does win this, then it's a bit of a squash. So you want to see Big Cass get over the line and get another win under his belt to continue his heel streak and maybe beat the crap out of Big Show after the match or something like that while Enzo's got the best seat in the house to sit there and do nothing about it. So I'm going to be picking Big Cass to win that match. The New Day versus The Usos for the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championships. I think that the New Day will continue their reign. I think them winning them a couple of weeks ago at Battleground, you can't take them off them just yet. You You have to leave the the tag titles on the new day at the moment so that's who I'm picking. My prediction however, a bonus uh, prediction for this match is that this will be the best match on the show because they gel so well and the action between these guys at Battleground was phenomenal so I I think that's what's going to happen again is these guys are going to rip this a new one. Randy Orton versus Rusev. I want Rusev to win. However, every time he comes up against an American, he never wins. So I'm picking Randy Orton to beat Rusev at SummerSlam, as much as that sucks, because Rusev should really be Jinder Mahal right now, shouldn't he? Rusev is a big, badass dude who I believe should be in Jinder Mahal's place as WWE champion and running through the roster at the moment. Akira Tozawa versus Neville in a rematch for the... Cruiserweight Championship, you've got to keep it on on Tozawa. With Titus and at ringside, you've got to keep it on Tozawa. He's only won it a week ago. He can't cough it back up to Neville. So that's who I'm going with. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Jinder Mahal for the WWE Championship. I think Jinder Mahal is going to retain. As much as I would love to see Jinder Mahal lose the WWE Championship to Shinsuke Nakamura, I just think that after Shinsuke hurt John Cena, or didn't hurt John Cena, but but certainly put a dent in his neck last week. I don't think it's going to... I think that's hurt Shinsuke's chances at winning the WWE Championship. So I'm going to be backing Jinder Mahal to find a way to retain the WWE title and maybe carry it all the way through to Survivor Series at least. Alexa Bliss versus Sasha Banks for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. You've got to go with Alexa Bliss continuing her reign. Sasha Banks is a three-time women's champion. I don't think it's time to take it off Sasha... uh, Take it off Alexa Bliss just yet. So, Naomi versus Natalia for the WWE SmackDown's Women's Championship. This uh, this is probably the hardest one to pick of the of the whole card. I think think Naomi's going to keep it. That's who I'm predicting. I really don't want Naomi to keep it. I so think Natalia deserves it. But my prediction is going to be Naomi to win and retain her Women's Championship. The main event: Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, Samoa Joe and Braun Strowman in a fatal four-way match for the WWE Universal Championship. And bear in mind, if Brock, Lesnar and Paul ha- if Brock Lesnar loses this match, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman leave WWE, which to me tells me that they're not. So I'm predicting Braun Strowman to win the WWE Universal Championship, just based on the fact that the pull-apart brawl on Raw was between the two of them, between Lesnar and and Strowman, so I think that tells us that he's going to be the, the big contender, and that's also something that I think that they could use for a future highlights package as well, so uh, I'm going to be picking Braun Strowman, but don't be surprised if Lesnar retains. I think that he has a very good chance of retaining that title. So, that is my predictions for SummerSlam, guys. I will speak to you in my SummerSlam reaction and results video. I'm still so disappointed about the whole Baron Corbin thing. I just think that's a complete utter waste of the Money in the Bank contract. I think that I'd rather them give it to someone like Shinsuke Nakamura, let him hold it for like a a six to eight month period, maybe cash it in at Royal Rumble or cash it in at Survivor Series. Don't just give it to a dude and then take it off him him in six weeks and not even get, get him any kind of rub out of it because... If he doesn't win at SummerSlam, then that is just what a waste. He'll, what's Baron Corbin really done? Feuded with Dolph Ziggler, feuded with Shinsuke Nakamura, and that's about it. He won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, so what? That doesn't count for shit. 
Big Show and Cesaro have won it. It's not like Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker have won these things and Shawn Michaels and Triple H. It's not the Royal Rumble, so at the end of the day, who cares? So, yeah, it really does... It, that, it must suck to be him right now. I do really feel for him as much as I don't like him. I don't like his character. I don't like who he portrays. I don't like his look. I don't like much about him. And I'm glad that he has lost because I would love to see Shinsuke Nakamura walk out of SummerSlam as the WWE Champion. He won't, but I would love to see that. I would love to be wrong. So the only thing that might change that decision is that Jinder Mahal doesn't get any reaction from the crowd. So maybe switching it to Shinsuke Nakamura will get a fair bit of a pop from the crowd, but I still think it's too soon. He only debuted six months ago. So uh, let's leave it at that, guys. I will speak to you on Sunday after SummerSlam. Monday if you live in Australia. So thanks, guys, and I will speak to you then. Have a good one. Bye. Wow. Well, that's a great way for the WWE to completely squash a brand-new up-and-coming hero.